In this video, I'm revealing nine top wines that sell for around $25 in the United States. There's red wines and white wines, and a number of different countries and regions represented, so there should be something for everyone. The first top wine for $25 a bottle is the 2020 Lillian Ledoux. Lillian Ledoux is located in Saint Estef on Bordeaux's left bank. It's an absolute steal to be able to get a wine of this quality for only $25 or so. This is a wine that's received favorable reviews from pretty much every major critic who has reviewed it. Lillian Ledoux has 80 hectares of vineyards that are planted to 50% Merlot, 45% Cabernet Sauvignon, and they also have small amounts of Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot as well. This is a wine that matures in 40% New French Oak for 14 to 16 months. Lillian Ledoux has been on a hot streak since around 2014 or so, so you really can't go wrong buying any of their wines since that vintage, but my favorites during that stretch are the 2016, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Lillian Ledoux was certified organic for their farming methods beginning with the 2023 vintage. This is a wine that you can enjoy young due to the high Merlot percentage, but it's definitely better with a few years of bottle age, and it should cruise in your cellar for up to 15 years or so. Ornelia is one of my favorite Super Tuscan wines, but unfortunately the price has gone up dramatically, and it now sells for over $250 per bottle. Fortunately, however, Ornelia also has a third wine that's called La Volta de Ornelia that they've been selling and producing since the 1991 vintage. This wine is a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Sangiovese. I find that the Sangiovese gives it some refreshing acidity. This wine matures for about 10 months, partially in barriques that were previously used for Ornelia, and partially in concrete tanks. This wine comes in at about 14% alcohol by volume. While the 2021 vintage is on shelves now, this wine is a consistently excellent option, so my recommendation is not vintage specific. This wine also improves with some additional bottle age. I found the 2015 vintage on a wine list in London a few months ago, and that wine was showing extremely well. This is a wine that you can enjoy young in a pinch with a healthy decant and preferably with food. And in that regard, this wine is making good inroads on restaurant wine lists. And I've seen it offered by the glass at a number of steakhouses in the United States as well. So even if you don't buy it by the bottle, Definitely keep an eye out for it by the glass at restaurants. One of the all-time favorite wines on this channel, for both myself and a number of viewers, is Chateau La Roque. Chateau La Roque is a wine that's flown largely under the radar because until recently it was sold exclusively in France, and is thus a bit of an insider secret. Chateau La Roque is located in saint emilion on Bordeaux's right bank. They have 54 hectares of vines that average an impressive 50 years of age. These vineyards are located in a prestigious area, and some of their best vines are located near Trolong Mondo. They farm organically, and they use only 45% of the harvest in their top wine, so they use an extremely strict selection. This wine matures for 18 months in 50% New French Oak. While 2021 was not a strong vintage in Bordeaux, La Roque's wine did extremely well and has received a number of high scores from critics. The 2022 futures are selling for $33 to $34. So as I mentioned before, this wine is definitely going to be increasing in price on a going forward basis. So it's definitely a good idea to stock up on it and buy it by the case while you can still get the wine at $25 or so. Because I suspect that by the time the 2022 hits store shelves, it's probably gonna be selling for closer to 40 bucks or so. This is a wine that has some elegance. It's a wine that you can enjoy young if you give it a healthy decant, but it's definitely going to be better with five to seven years of additional bottle age, and you can age it for up to two decades with no problem. Purgatory del Barbaresco is a cooperative that has a little more than 50 members. Collectively, this cooperative controls around one-third of the vineyards in Barbaresco. While many cooperatives have a bad reputation, this one has a well-deserved reputation for quality. There's several safeguards in place that help to ensure that there's consistent quality vintage after vintage at Protatori del Barbaresco. First, the producers are all required to give 100% of their fruit to the cooperative, so they can't cherry pick the best wine and sell that separately for themselves. Second, prices for the grapes are determined annually and are based on quality. 
Well, Proditore del Barbaresco has a flagship Barbaresco that it produces every vintage, and which I also enjoy very much. That one sells for about 50 bucks a bottle, but the fruit that does not make it into that wine, and some of the fruit that's not located within the Barbaresco growing zone, makes it into the Langa Nebbiolo. The Langa Nebbiolo is an excellent way for people to get their Nebbiolo fix if they want to be able to pop and pour a wine immediately without having to give that wine additional bottle age. While this is a consistently excellent wine that does well most vintages, the 2021 vintage is on store shelves now and it received a 93 point score from Robert Parker. This is a wine that has refreshing acidity. It's an excellent food wine and one that will pair extremely well with pizza, pasta, and both white and red meat. They produce about 12,000 cases of it annually, so you should be able to track this one down with no difficulty. This is a wine that you can definitely enjoy immediately or at any time over the next six to eight years. So it definitely gives you tremendous flexibility in your cellar and is an excellent cellar defender as well. The next top wine for $25 a bottle is the 2018 Marquez de Murrieta Finca Igai Reserva. Definitely shop around for this one, as I did see many places selling it for more than $25 a bottle. But even if you have to pay a little bit extra, it's definitely worth it, as this is an extraordinary wine for this price point. Marquez de Murrieta is a historic producer that was founded way back in 1852. This is one of the very few Rioja producers that produces their wine exclusively from estate-grown fruit. Marquez de Murrieta has around 300 hectares of vines that range in elevation from around 320 meters to about 485 meters above sea level. This wine is around 80% Tempranillo, but it also has some Graciano, Mezuelo, and Garnacha as well. This wine matures for around 21 months in a mix of new and used American oak, and then another 18 months in bottle before it's released, so it already has some decent aging on it. This is wine that comes in at around 14% alcohol by volume. This wine is medium bodied with a velvety texture and some impressive freshness. There's not quite as much power for this vintage as there has been for some past vintages. This is the wine that you can enjoy immediately, but it will certainly improve with a little more bottle age and you can easily keep it eight to 10 years or more. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. The next up wine for $25 a bottle is Terrell's Hunter Valley Semillon. Hunter Valley, Australia is a region that's well known for its unique expression of Semillon. And Terrell's is certainly one of the top producers of Semillon in Hunter Valley. For those of you who are not familiar with this unique expression of semillon, it's bone dry, quite light, it tends to have a citrus character, and it has extremely high acidity and very low alcohol by volume, only around 10 to 11% alcohol by volume. This is a wine that's fairly neutral in its youth, but it can develop tremendous complexity and pronounced aromatic intensity with some substantial bottle age. After a couple decades or so, it can develop descriptors that include toast, honey, and hay, among others. For those of you taking WSET courses, it's definitely a good idea for you to familiarize yourself with this wine, as it appears often on some of the blind tastings. And they even ask essay questions about Hunter Valley and Hunter Valley Semillon quite frequently. So definitely make sure that you know both the wine and the region if you're taking WSET exams. While this wine is enjoyable when it's young, it becomes truly special with age. So definitely make sure you buy a number of bottles of this wine and be sure to put a few in the back of your cellar so you're not tempted to drink it too quickly. The next top wine for $25 a bottle is an exceptional value that comes from the Jumilla Appellation in Spain. The highly acclaimed 2020 Casa Castillo La Tendida is a blend that consists of 85% Monastre, which is also known as Morved in other places, and 15% Garnacha. The fruit for this wine comes from vineyards that are planted at 750 meters above sea level and which are farmed organically. While these vines are fairly young, they're planted in some of the very best soils at Bodega Casa Castillo. As such, this is a wine that has some impressive elegance to it. It comes in at around 14.5% alcohol by volume. 
It has a medium body and fine grain tannins. The next top line for $25 a bottle is one that I discovered during my first trip to Argentina. I was sitting at a bar in Buenos Aires and I was ordering a burger and I needed a glass of wine to go with it. So I ordered this wine and it was shockingly affordable and it was both an excellent pairing for the burger but also a very enjoyable wine on its own. The Mendo Malbec from Mendoza, Argentina is a consistently excellent wine that you should be able to buy year in and year out without regard to vintage variation. You should be able to find the 2020 and 2021 vintages on store shelves now. This impressive wine comes from vines that were planted way back in the 1920s. They harvest the fruit a little bit early to help preserve freshness and acidity. This wine matures for 12 months in only one-third new French oak, so the oak influence on this wine is extremely subtle. This wine has vibrant fruit flavors, there's red and black fruit, and also descriptors that include violet and mixed spice. It's extremely enjoyable on release, but you can definitely age it for a few years as well. They produce about 88,000 bottles of this wine annually, so you should be able to track this one down without too much trouble. The next top wine for $25 a bottle is one that has its roots in the pandemic. Back in 2020, there was an abundance of high quality Chardonnay available in the market, since a number of wineries who would normally purchase that fruit were unable to do so due to the challenging financial circumstances they faced at the time. And so Greg Brewer, who's also the winemaker for Brewer Clifton, purchased a lot of this high quality Chardonnay and used it to produce the Diatum Chardonnay from Santa Barbara County. He absolutely blew it out of the park with the 2020 vintage for this wine. While the wine hasn't quite reached those heights since that time, the 2021 and 2022 vintages are also outstanding and certainly over-deliver at this very reasonable $25 price point. This wine features impressive complexity, vibrant acidity, and pronounced flavors that include citrus fruit and also wet stone. There's also a texture that I appreciate on this wine. This wine does get better with a few years of additional bottle age, so even though it's extremely enjoyable when it's young, this is another one that I definitely buy in multiples so that you can try some when it's young and then also see how it evolves with a couple of years of additional bottle age.